Today we're gonna to talk about classes. Classes are a type of variable, or type of object I should say, in Python that are really useful. Think of them sort of like a cookie cutter. A cookie cutter can make from the dough the same sort of cookie each time. And each cookie now has the same shape and maybe you're gonna decorate it the same way. Classes do the same thing with objects. They create the same type of objects, objects that share the same type of field. So think of students in a classroom. Students in a classroom, they're all gonna have a first name, they're all gonna have a last name, they're all gonna have like a, a school number, an email address, a grade, right? So because all those share common attributes, we're gonna use the class function to define them, okay? Now, in the example we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to tie it to material science. Let's go ahead and make a class called Brave Lattice. You do that by using the keyword class, it turns purple, right? And then we're gonna do Brave, we're gonna do capital Brave underscore lattice. The convention is to use capital letters on the first words of a class, right? So we're gonna go ahead and create this class, colon, uh, and the first thing that we should do is, well, we're gonna put stuff inside of here later. For now, let's just put pass, because if you don't put uh, anything, it's gonna cause an error. So for now, we've just created a class called Bravi Lattice, and there's nothing inside of it. So we can create members of this class, just like there's like members of the cookies you make with the cookie cutter. We can create members of this class. We call them instances. So an instance of this class, let's pick a material like copper, right? We can say that CU, copper, is a member of Brave Lattice. We can do that just by doing typing Brave underscore Lattice, and since it's a class, we need to put oops, one of those at the end, okay? And voila, when we run this now, we now, if we go to our variable explorer, we see that we now have our variable copper. It is of the type Brave Lattice, the type of class we created here, okay? Okay, now we've made copper as a member of this. So what do you use these for? One of the great things about um, classes is, again, these associated information tied with them. So let's say every material that is a, in a, a member of the 14 Bravi lattices, it's gonna have a crystal structure, and it's gonna have like a lattice parameter, it's gonna have you know the angles that we, we can think of. So right now we could say like copper dot um, lattice parameter, the lattice parameter of copper is equal to what? 3.615 angstrom, okay? So when we run that now, if we see this, nothing's changed over here, but if you select this, you'll notice now that, ah, oh, sure enough, in the copper class, in the copper, which is an, uh, an instance of the Brave Lattice class, it now has this information called lattice parameter with the value stored. We call these fields, right? These pieces of information associated with the class are called fields. And the convention is to use lowercase letters for those with an underscore separating them, right? And you could do as many as you want. You could do like copper um, color if you wanted, right? And you could say, you know, its color is, you know, copper colored. <laughs> I don't know how you'd say that, right? So, uh, and then sure enough, if you open it up, you would see that it has these different fields. It now has the, the color field. Okay, as well as the lattice parameter field. Now you might say, well, sure, but couldn't we have just said like that the copper lattice parameter equals 3.615, like just make a variable, right? Store it as a float and name the variable that. You can, but this is a better way to hierarchically organize your data and it has some other big advantages. Here's three big advantages for why we wanna use classes. We can do something called initialization, which is really great. There's custom methods that we can write for them. And then there's a help file, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, first, let's show you how to do the help file. After you declare your class, we're gonna do um, what's called a doc string. You do a doc string by doing three apostrophes or quotation marks in a row. And then you can type some stuff like, here is uh, where we write the help, right? And this shows up when people ask for help on this class, it will tell them this. So we actually wanna say something a little more helpful than that. Maybe we could say like, um, this class defines all the structural info for a material, okay? And that way we know what this class is actually doing. Great, okay? Now uh, let's, so the first, so there's help, there's also initialization and methods. Let's do initialization next, right? So we're gonna define a, using a, this special syntax, underscore, underscore, I-N-I-T, that stands for initialization, right? Okay, and so when we initialize it, when you initialize a new um, instance of a class, the first thing we're gonna initialize is itself, right? So self, and then you can send it some information. So for the first time when we initialize copper, we didn't send it any information, but we could have sent it information. Like let's say we wanted to send it the crystal structure uh, or the crystal system, which is cubic, and the centering, which is face centered. So let's go ahead and say that we're gonna be expecting those. We're gonna be expecting the crystal system and the centering, okay? Now, 
once you have those, we can go ahead and say that self dot crystal system equals um, we'll say that it is equal to the crystal system and that self dot centering is going to be equal to centering. Now heads up here, the word on the right centering is a variable, right? But this over here is a field. They can share the same name or they could have been different. Like if instead of centering, if we wanted to call it like center type or centering type, that would be okay. That would now be the name of our field, okay? So now if we try and run this, what will happen if we try and run this right now? That we get this error. See that we get this type error. It says, hey, in your initialization, there's two things missing. Crystal system and centering are required arguments when you do this. So it's yelling at us saying, those were supposed to be there. Great. Well, we can add them. When we uh, when we declare this copper as a member uh, as an instance of the class Brave Lattice, we can now just go ahead and add that. It's a member of the cubic crystal system, right? And then for centering, it is face centered. Okay. So now when we run it, we can go ahead and open up our mem our uh, copper class instance here, and we see that it's got check it out. It's got this centering type field, and it says that it is face for the centering type. And under crystal system, it is cubic. Okay, so this is already getting more useful, right? It's it's a it's a defined way to uh, organize your variables each time. But now you can do some really cool functions. Right? If you wanted to, you could say like self dot um, crystal uh, structure is now equal to. You could say that it's equal to uh, crystal underscore system plus centering. Okay. Let's go ahead and run that. Now when we pull this up, you'll see that the crystal structure is cubic face. Okay? Maybe you wanted to add like one of these in there, some some spacing and stuff like that. Or you could make it, you know, do some other things. But it's already getting more useful for us, okay? And if you declare something else, right? Let's declare another variable over here. Let's call it magnesium. We can do our Brave lattice there. And it's different. It is hexagonal hexagonal and its centering is um, base centered. Yeah, it's base centered, I think. Hexagonal close packed. Okay, so when we go ahead and run that now, now we've got two Brave lattice type objects, right? Both instances of this class. And if you look at magnesium, check it out. We never defined its lattice parameter, but it doesn't matter, right? If we want to add it later, that's no problem. But right now, by default, all it has is crystal system, centering type, and crystal structure. And there they are defined like that. Now, when we define our uh, Brave, our Brave Lattice class up top, we can also include some uh, logic in here. Like, for example, we say if um, our self dot crystal uh, underscore system is equal to, we're going to do two equals because it's a logic, it's, it's comparing it, right? If that's equal to cubic, then we can make something happen. We can say, okay, in that case, we know that self dot alpha equals 90. That's the angle between two of the, the of the um, axes, and we know that self dot beta, another angle, is also equal to 90, and that self dot gamma is equal to 90. So what's great about this is, imagine if we're going to be doing Bravi lattice for a bunch of different materials, we're probably going to come across a bunch of them that are cubic. By doing this inside of this initialization, right, we can sort of define a bunch of things right off the bat. Every time that something comes in cubic, we can load up a whole bunch of information like this. Now when we run it, because that material is cubic, uh, if we open up copper, it will have additional information, right? It has stored that the alpha, beta, and gamma are all 90 degrees, but since we haven't defined it for magnesium yet, it hasn't told us what those things are, right? Let's show you one more thing. So we've talked about that we can write a help file for this, which is great. We've shown you the initialization thing, which is pretty slick. Now, the third thing I want to show you is that we can do custom methods, right? So let's do a custom method that calculates how many um, atoms there are per unit cell, right? So we're going to call this, we're going to define a function, right? So DEF, the keyword there, and then let's name this function. We'll call it atoms in the unit cell, right? Some you can name it whatever you want. That's what we're going to name it, okay? And what does it take as an input? Instead of having to send it the crystal system and the lattice parameter and all that jazz, you could just send it self, right? And so what we're going to do when we go to use this function, it'll look like this. So let's come down here. Well, for now, let's just put pass inside of it. We'll show you what we're going to do in a moment. 
So now when we want to use this, we would say like atoms per cell would be equal to, we're going to run the function atoms in, oops, in the, we want the function, and we're going to send it the copper instance of the Brave Lattice class, okay? And inside this copper, it's got all the information that it could need to calculate how many atoms are there per unit cell. So in the function for atoms per unit cell, let's go ahead and explicitly tell it. So we're gonna say if the, um, if self dot crystal system equals cubic, and then we're gonna say and if, oops, if self dot centering type equals face, right? So now we know that it's a face centered cubic crystal structure. So now we can say that the atoms um, per cell is equal to four and we can return atoms per cell. Okay, so great. Let's go ahead and run this. Um, make sure there's, see what our error is here. Oh, we need two equals because we're doing a comparison there. Okay, so great, let's run this. And uh, we, we've now created this new variable here, atoms per cell, and sure enough, it's telling us it's four, okay? So pretty slick. Um, this is much more compact way of organizing and working with data, again, because in just this little tiny variable called CU for copper, you could store all the information you want about copper, and it's gonna make it pretty slick to work with it, okay? so. Now that I've shown you sort of the nuts and bolts of how classes work in general, let me show you an example, another one uh, associated with Brave lattices. Okay, so here we've, we've got an example where we create a class called Brave lattice. I initialize it with this init, definite, this definite uh, self, and we give it a name, right? So now you've got self.name, so some sort of name of whatever we're working on. Now here I've created a crystal list, right? So in this crystal list, you've got aluminum, copper, and tungsten, okay? I'm gonna define some functions. One I'm gonna call centering. So what it's gonna do is gonna take C, which will be a member, it will be an instance of the Brave Lattice class, and the field is centering, and it's going to ask him, it says, is there simple, body, base, or face centering? And the person is going to type in S, B, C, or F for that, okay? So it's gonna store that string, S, B, C, or F, into this C dot centering, okay, object. And then it's gonna return that, okay? Then we have this other function called lattice parameters, lattice params, where a, c dot a, c dot b, and c dot c, that's c is a member, is an instance of the Brave lattice class, and then the a, b, and c are gonna to correspond to the a, b, and c lattice parameters. So it's asking, it's saying, hey, enter the lattice parameters, and then it's doing dot split, so they're gonna enter three numbers with spaces between them, and it's going to unpack those to these c, a, c, b, and c, c, okay? And it's gonna return those. Same thing with angles, it's gonna ask you to enter the lattice angles and it's going to split them so if you enter in three numbers with spaces between them it's going to unpack those into the alpha beta gamma right so we're going to start out with this crystals uh, dictionary it's an empty dictionary right it's this variable it's a dictionary called crystals right now and then we're going to say for crystal in crystal list so it's doing a for loop it's going through this crystal list and for each member right for each instance inside of this it's going to do the following inside of this for loop so first off it's going to say that C, the object C, is equal to a Brave lattice class of whatever that crystal is. So the first one's gonna be aluminum. It's going to create uh, aluminum, where by doing that right off the bat, it's going to be named aluminum, okay? Next thing it's going to do, it's gonna print the name. So here we're doing print, and then the F out front is a fancy way to do uh, text where you can print it material and then where whatever you have inside these curly brackets it'll actually you can just input the variable name there and it will fill it in which is nice okay then it's going to run the three functions that we did above lattice parameters lattice angles and centering so it's going to ask the user to input that information what the lattice parameters are what's the centering what are the angles and then from that it's going to go through a series of different logical questions to figure out what Brave lattice this one belongs to. The first thing it's going to try and figure out is what crystal system it belongs to by examining whether the lattice parameters are equal to one another and whether the angles are 90, you can figure out if it's cubic. If um, two of them are equal to one another, if they're all equal to one another, but the angle is not 90, then it's trigonal. And so you can go on down, you can figure out what the logic should be for tetragonal, hexagonal, um, orthorhombic, triclinic, monoclinic. So I'm going to skip some of that logic. Um, 
And then once it's ascertained that, it's going to ask about the centering. And based off of the centering, it's now going to spit back out the c.brave. So it's going to store in the c.brave field this information about what type it is. So let's show you this, how it works just by running it. Okay. So I'm going to run this program. Okay. The first thing it's asking, so it says the material is aluminum. It says enter the lattice parameter. So that's 3.615. 3.615 and 3.615. Now it's saying enter the angles. We know this is cubic, so that means it's 90, 90, and 90. Okay? And then it says, is there simple S, body B, base C, or face centering? This is face centered. Okay? Now it's saying to move on to the next one. Copper. Oh, I, I think I did the long, lat, wrong lattice parameters, but whatever. For copper, let's do this one. Let's say it's 3, 3, and 3. You know, it doesn't matter. The angles are also 90, 90, and 90, and the face centering, it's also face centering. Okay. Now for tungsten, I think tungsten is simple cubic. Um, anyways, let's punch in, I don't know what the lattice parameter is, let's just put that it's 5, 5, and 5. Um, the angles are also going to be 90, 90, and 90, and then it is simple. Okay, so by running that, the last thing it prints, it says for each name in crystal lattices, it's printing crystal name. So remember, crystals is a dictionary. If we come up over here, crystals is a dictionary, and inside the dictionary is stored three objects, which are Brave lattice type objects. And each one of these stores all the information that got generated there, right? So it was able to, when we print it, we say, okay, go to crystals. Now the keyword. Right, because key dictionaries, crystals is a dictionary, so when you call it, you have to give it the keyword and it returns a value. So the keyword that we're giving it is the name, so that's going to allow it to tell us whether we're talking about aluminum, tungsten, or copper, right? And then it's returning the field braves, right? Because now that it's a figured out, like, oh, when we when we open this up, copper, we realize that's a brave lattice, so now we can apply the field which we saved as brave lattice for. This is an example of how you can use classes. Um, to store information in really compact and useful ways. Okay, on to the next video.